In this video, I'll cover the Polygon tool. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The Polygon tool can be found on the toolbox, located by default below the Ellipse tools. If you see a different icon, you can click the small arrow on the lower right corner of whatever icon is displayed, which opens the Shape Tool Group flyout, and choose Polygon. This tool can also be activated by the Y shortcut. The property bar displays the default outline width and line style for all graphic elements, which can be changed for a polygon once it's created. I can also set the number of polygon sides. A polygon is created by clicking and dragging from one corner to the opposite corner of its bounding rectangle. Pressing and holding the Shift key while dragging the mouse creates a polygon from its center. Holding the Control key or Command on the Mac creates a polygon with all sides equal, and I can hold both keys to draw an identical sided polygon from its center. Once created, the polygon has eight sizing handles all around and an X at its center. Corner handles can be dragged to resize while maintaining the aspect ratio, and side handles can stretch or narrow. Clicking and dragging the X moves the polygon, and keeping the Shift key pressed constrains the move to be horizontal or vertical. When I click on the X, the sizing handles become rotation handles, which can be used to rotate or skew the polygon. The polygon center is now a circular pivot point, which I can click and drag to a different spot, and now this point is the center of rotation. Clicking the pivot point brings back the X and sizing handles. As long as a polygon's handles are displayed, I can change outline width, line style, left click a color swatch to add a solid fill, and right click a color swatch to set the outline color. I can also change the number of sides. I can use the object position fields in the property bar to place the polygon. By default, the X and Y coordinates here define the location of the X at the polygon center. But I can also choose a different reference point, like the top left corner, and specify that point's coordinates. When I use the Object Size fields to specify width and height, the reference point remains in place while other points move accordingly. The same applies for the Scale Factor fields, which reflect the change from the polygon's original dimensions. If I change either percentage, the reference point stays in place. I can also enter a rotation angle. If I want to make changes to a polygon that isn't selected, I need to first select it. I can select any polygon while the Polygon tool or any other shape tool is active, or I can press the spacebar to temporarily activate the Pick tool, which I can use to select the polygon. The Shape tool can be used to transform a polygon into a much more complex and interesting shape. I have this hexagon selected, and I'll click the Shape icon, which is just below the Pick tool. There are now nodes at each corner and at the midpoint of each side. Clicking and dragging any node produces the same shape at every corner or side, resulting in a star shape. With the Control or Command key pressed, each node remains the same distance from its adjacent nodes, or without this key, I can drag nodes to twist the shape. I can even drag nodes inward, with or without the modifier key, to get an overlapping star shape. With this 8-sided polygon, I can use the Shape tool to make things even more interesting. I can double-click on an edge to add a node, which adds similar nodes on all edges, and change the polygon even further. Double-clicking a node removes it, along with the similar nodes on the other edges. I can also click a node to select it, then click Convert to Curve in the property bar. Now I can adjust tangency at both ends of the line segment, curve and adjust more nodes, and add more curved nodes by double clicking. If I want to adjust individual nodes without maintaining even sides and corners, I can press the spacebar to temporarily switch to the Pick tool, which selects the polygon. Now I can click Convert to Curves. Press the spacebar to go back to the Shape tool, and adjust individual nodes. I can also drag a selection marquee around multiple nodes to move them together. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the Polygon tool in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below 
that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial.